Got him. Welcome to Mythical Kitchen, where dreams become food that forgot to study for the calculus test, and then they show up in their underwear and they go, no, Mrs. Jensen, I know the answers, I swear. A little Jimmy Stewart. No, I know the answers, Mrs. Jensen, I swear. All right, so I got a bone to pick with meatball sandwiches. Yes, that is how I'm choosing to start out this episode. Meatball sandwiches, the flavor is absolutely god tier. You get all that delicious seasoned loose meat in there, but the problem is they're structurally BS. You got these round balls and a round hoagie roll, so when you go and bite in, the ball goes and spurts out of it. So my goal today is to perfect the meatball sandwich by going where no meatballer has ever gone before, to the shawarma spit. I'll be shaving these balls in three easy steps. You can snag the time codes right there. We also got a full written recipe down in the description. And hey, also good news. We finally started a podcast like a year and a half ago. Anyways, newest episode just dropped yesterday. It's called A Hot Dog is a Sandwich. You can find it wherever you get your podcasts. Go to Subway, order a meatball sandwich. Go, hey, do you sell podcasts? We are making the meatball mixture that we're gonna eventually stack on the shawarma machine and sort of shave down these stacked meat log balls. We're essentially making a meatball mixture, but I'm gonna run it through a food processor because you know this literally refers to like gyro, like the rotation motion of this shawarma machine spit. Uh, and the lamb and beef mixture is almost a sort of like emulsified processed sausage type of thing. That's why it holds so well and you can shave it off. And I wanna get that exact thing going, but with all the flavors of meatballs. So we'll see, we'll see how this goes. So I'm gonna take some toasted breadcrumbs and I'm gonna add milk to it. I really like to hydrate my breadcrumbs uh, before I add them into my meatballs. That way I think you just get a really nice tender meatball. It's gonna be very supple, some nice supple shaven balls. And then we're gonna add some onion right to that. Add in a whole lot of garlic. These are flavors that you associate with meatballs, right? Like onion, garlic, a little bit of oregano, a little bit of chili flake. I like a nice spicy and meat the ball. We're gonna add in some salt in there. Then we're gonna add in our herbs. We got parsley and basil, and then we're gonna run this, yeah, just buzz it up, might as well. Now I'm gonna put eggs in it first. The order in which you do this is not important because there's one goal in mind, one team, one dream, and that is to spite the meatball sandwich's existence. I really do, do love meatball sandwiches, and I do love a nice, big old sloppy, wet sandwich. No one makes a better, wetter, sloppier meatball sandwich than a uh, Pinocchio. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all ever had the meatball sandwich at Pinocchio? They don't toast the bread and it's the softest bread. And they take meatballs that are swimming in what I believe is marinara sauce. It's been watered down. So it's just nice and wet. And then they put that in the sandwich and they put it like on top of a pile of wet coleslaw that they give you. It's great. But that said, structurally it never quite holds up. So we're gonna try and fix that. I wanna try and fix it. I wanna perfect this. You know multiverse theory? Like how in some universes, like people don't walk around, but they're like sentient food processors. I feel like in multiverse theory, meatballs aren't balls, they're meat cubes. Ah! All right, beautiful. So we got our like flavor paste slurry going on and then we're gonna add all this meat to it. That's nice. I'm gonna add the meat gradually so as to not gum up the food processor. Did I do this right? You're trying to make like a dense meat paste covered in flavor sauce. There we go. Now we can add the rest of our meat. As those breadcrumbs sort of hydrate, why do we blend so much meat on this show? We had to put a moratorium on blending hot dogs. That was a real thing I said in a Slack thread. This guy's moratorium on blending hot dogs. And now here I am, just blending more meat. Welcome to the Meat Blender Show, hosted by me, your meat blender, Josh. God! Yeah, you want your food processor to struggle against the tensile strength of your raw meat. That's good, you want it to go That sounds like a clogged garbage disposal. Meat's done. Yeah, I'm just gonna... I don't enjoy the feeling of human contact, but if it's slopping around in raw meat, that's kind of more my comfort zone. Which is weird, because I do have a lot of like uh, tactile sensitivities. Just this ain't one of them. We got a meat paste. See you next time. <laughs> This is a technique used to make Turkish ground meat doner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some meat mixer, I'm gonna form it into a patty. Yeah, 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 just like such. And then you pierce it through that and get it down here and then kind of form it. But on top of that, I'm gonna take a slice of cheese, kind of impale that right down into the patty. And then we're gonna alternate this and then these here hot coils are gonna cook it in a rotary fashion, caramelizing and browning that beef on the outside whilst all that cheese fat is melting through the beef. So then we're gonna shave it off into a sub sandwich and then that should be the perfect meatball sandwich. I've run all the calculations. The key here is to not be grossed out by touching raw meat and kind of mash it up there and then continue to shingle on. Ooh, this is a thick boy. Yup, shingle on some meat. Spray yourself down. Guys, we gotta sanitize the olive oil spray. Just a little production note for us. Uh, 
what in here has not been touched by raw meat? If we're being honest, Trevor, oh, you've been touched by raw meat. Remember when we high-fived earlier? That's raw meat. Keep stacking. Typically you, <laughs> typically, you don't want to typically do anything on this. I was gonna say something about using the leaner meat because you're gonna get a lot of fat loss from this, but you know, this is uncharted territory. Who knows what's gonna happen? Hey, remind me not to eat the cheese because I'm gonna want to snack on the cheese. You guys ever do that? Doing raw prep and then you actually snack on something? And they go, uh-oh. Just me, eh? That's okay. You know, we're learning. Eh, just keep stacking. There we go. We, we kind of blew a lot of budget buying this $300 shawarma machine, so uh, sign up for only hams. You know, we really need it there. It's just a picture of me half naked with ham. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my hands to sculpt all this meat up. I'm gonna lube up your hands and use that to sculpt the beef, like uh, like uh, Patrick Swayze in Ghost, or uh, uh, Patrick Swayze in uh, Point Break. Any Patrick Swayze role that you think would help you in this situation, I think you should probably do it. I don't see what you all are seeing. I'm just, look, I'm out here cooking. You're all out here with uh, the gutter, gutter brains. I think it looks pretty good. You guys think it looks pretty good? What were you expecting? <laughs> this is it, this is the show. This is what, this is the whole thing. This is why I bought a $300 machine, is to make this. Oh, wait, you're not impressed. I'm impressed. You kind of sculpt up the shaft a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so then you're gonna take uh, this little claw machine and you're gonna kind of, yeah, that, oh, that's gonna help. And then now, uh, this is hot. Um, gotta shove it. I'm slipping because of the beef fat. And now you just gotta kind of, it's a simple technique. You just gotta sort of loop it in and hook it. Kind of going, ow, ow. Hold on, I think, this, I think this is the way to go. Ow, it's all hot. Yeah, and then I think you can like, ow, ow. Hot. And is it in? Is it in yet? Can you tell? Ow, it's swarming my hand. Ow. I mean, really, in one simple step, you, you have meatball shawarma in three hours. Welcome back to Mythical Kitchen, one of the cooking shows of YouTube. I think that's a good one. We're making kind of like a bit of a spicy marana here. Some will call it an arrabbiata sauce. <laughs> You gotta jar your butter loose a little bit. You gotta start with some butter in that pot. This is actually a thing that I really love. I love tomato-based sauces, and I love kind of playing with them. That was one of the first things I did when I started cooking as a kid. So I just take like jarred sauce, and then I just sort of like add my own things. Mostly Tony Shashery's not gonna BS you. And it kind of makes it, you know, your own little recipe. I also got red bell peppers. You're gonna get some of that like sweet <laughs> bell pepperiness. I guess that's what you get from bell peppers. And just give it one more nice little chop. Then we're just gonna add these peppers to the butter in the pot and just let those sort of swim in there. We wanna toast up all of our aromatics before we add our tomatoes. I always like to cut peppers flesh side up because otherwise knife can have a hard time getting through the skin there, but then always goes through the flesh. Look at that, that a helpful cooking tip. Hey, do you wanna know what we want to know is helpful from you? That's fantastic. Uh, please fill out the mythical census. We're asking our audience, all the mythical beasts out there, uh, what you want to see from us, what you think we've been doing good, what we can do better. This is how we know how to serve you. You're like, well, we hate seeing Josh chop red bell peppers. I'm gonna go, too bad, because we're doing it. But that is the power that the mythical census gives you. It's all bell pepper related questions. Uh, it's not, it's actually really useful for us. Please, please fill it out. We got a link in the description. Now we got, it's like a tiny bell pepper, but it's made of green and it's spicy. You know, chop up a jalapeno. Uh, I like adding jalapeno to a lot of tomato based sauces kind of puts you in salsa territory a little bit. I like spice with my meatballs a whole lot because you get all that fattiness from the beef and a little bit of creaminess in the cheese and you get all that spice to just undercut it. Cook down. Uh, uh. Jalapenos chopped. I almost had an aneurysm there. One more chop away from just pooping myself. All right, now you can take these little, little green hairies right here, shave off the tips. And then just run your knife through these. And that's kind of like the mother of invention in cooking, right? You like notice a formula in a dish. Marinara sauce is like garlic, onion, other things, tomatoes. Take the onion, take the garlic, substitute those for other things. And that's how you learn how to make new dishes, you know? Yep. Toss that in. And as that is just at a roiling hot sear, we're gonna take a little pinch of sugar. Sugar is great, just balances out the acid of tomatoes a little bit. And then a little bit of salt. A little bit of garlic. Garlic's a lovely baseline for everything. And then here we got harissa. Harissa is a actually Tunisian spice paste that's made with peppers and then a little bit of caraway. Mm. Gives this lovely sort of nutty bitterness. I'm just gonna pop that in. That's totally optional though. You don't have to do that. Uh, assuming you already bought the $300 shawarma machine from Amazon. We're gonna dump all these tomatoes into the thing. And then we're just gonna let this simmer. We're gonna let this simmer uh, for you know about 40 minutes on low. It's gonna really cook all those veg in there. And then you're also gonna tighten up 
those crushed tomatoes a little bit. This is any normal can of crushed tomatoes. I always have it in my cabinet. Sometimes you just need a nice little smoothie. Thumb that with some frozen banana and a Vitamix. Boom, bingo, bango. We got some creatine in there and that's called lunch, baby. I think I have heat stroke. Holy crap, we did it. Not that I was doubting myself during any point in this process, but like at some point when I saw how much the cheese was oozing out and weeping, I got a little scared. I don't wanna say this is beautiful, cause that wouldn't be the right term. Am I impressed by this? I certainly am. I'm gonna grab this little cheese beef fat dripping. I've got about all the cheese fat has melted through the beef. First, we spent so much money on this machine that we didn't wanna buy a legit shawarma shaver cause that was 200 bucks, so we got an $18 electric knife instead. Come here, you beef lug. All right, so the goal here, like with gyros, uh, it is shaved as thin as possible. So we're gonna try and get like thin little flavor strips off this. Hold on, hold on. Let's just examine this real fast. So here we have all the best parts of the meatball. This is like the meatball bark here. It's in thin sheets, so I'm gonna be able to fit in the sandwich. I'm excited about this. I'm gonna keep shaving off. Look at that. Now we just gotta turn it. <laughs> it's like a meaty go round. Yeah, get some of that nice cheese bark. Ah, fudge! All right, we got all our lovely and photogenic meatball shawarma here. Now all we have to do is start constructing the sandwich. Take a nice seated hoagie roll, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little, I'm gonna smear a little ricotta on there. I really love ricotta and meatballs. It's one of my favorite combinations. All right, and then I'm gonna lay down a hefty base of sauce on the other side. So the ricotta and sauce should not meet yet, but they soon will be acquainted as in a rom-com meat cute, whereby sauce and ricotta meet like on a park bench and one's reading like infinite jest. The other person's like, oh my God, what are you reading? And you're like, he's so pretentious. And you're like, oh, I changed myself for you. All right, we got that down there. Now, uh, uh, I think I'm just gonna kind of claw all the shawarma meat in there. Yeah, yeah, here we go. That's what I'm talking about. There's no rules to how to construct a meatball shawarma sandwich because to my knowledge, this has never been done. I wanna get some of that caramelized mozz down there. This is just, this is like the bark on barbecue. This is cheese bark. And it's good, baby. Oh, that's real good. That's looking pretty bomb.com. Take a little bit more sauce, just go over the top. Lovely. And then I'm gonna take some cheese and I'm gonna rip it in half. And I'm gonna kinda just, just tuck it. I'm gonna tuck some cheese in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna pop this in an oven at 500 degrees for just like four or five minutes just to melt that cheese and get it all nice and copacetic. More cheese bark. Holy shnikes, we, well here, this is it. This came, it was in the oven, but now it's out and we've melted cheese on it. It looks really great. It's immediately like holding together better than a meatball sandwich. If that was meatballs, it'd be all jostling around. You go, whoa, uh, let's cut it in half. Uh, oh, oh, trick for a sandwich. You take the knife, you tuck everything, then you get it folded on itself. Then you slice it. Let's look at this here. Yeah, okay, so, well, what I've noticed, all the shawarma pieces sort of recongealed into a meatball. But that said, we got a lot of extra caramelization from all that on the spit. Let's give it a try. Got him. I remember the start of this video when I was like, meatball sandwiches suck. I think I just like meatball sandwiches. And this whole thing is just an exercise in, I don't know, a gustatory masturbation because I mean, this is just, this is a meatball sandwich and it's pretty nice. But maybe there's a life lesson to be learned here that Trevor can tell you about. Trevor. Did I hear something about masturbation? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Trevor, take a bite of that with the spork that you're holding like you're gonna bludgeon me with it. <laughs> there it is. Wait, let me get your drippings. <laughs> your drippings on my sandwich. <laughs> Try me. Scrape it up. Scrape it in the mind. Wait, no, Trevor, try this. Remember that sauce we made? I cut the whole thing. <laughs> now you gotta kind of slurp it. If you're a French dip, this is a ball dip. <laughs> this is a napkin. What's up? Do you enjoy this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me too, man. I think we've all learned a lot here today. Um, Amazon, great prices on shawarma machines right now. You're running about $300. You can't afford not to get one. Uh, 
You know, you could like make a car payment or something, contribute to a Roth IRA or buy a shawarma machine for home. Anyways, thanks for stopping by. It's a pretty good sandwich. Uh, got new episodes out every week on the, the channel here that you know Trevor's uh, about. Got podcasts every Wednesday, hot dogs and sandwich. Eat, eat, eat that up. Uh, Mythical Kitchen on Instagram. Head us under hashtag dreams become food. And go get yourself a meatball sandwich. Turns out it's pretty fine as is. If we're being honest, we're being dead honest with you. <laughs> it's a pretty good food. You gotta eat it goblin stance though. <laughs> goblin stance. Got none of that reference the whole time. What is that, Minecraft? <laughs> no. Yeah, goblins in Minecraft? It's called being a moron. <laughs> You can cook up your own feast while wearing the Mythical Kitchen apron, available now at mythical.com.